Michael Barrymore. Yes, all your favorite funsters have come together for the 1993 British Comedy Awards. And now, please welcome your host, Jonathan Ross. Thank you very much indeed. Good evening and welcome to the fourth annual British Comedy Awards. As usual, the room is packed with famous comedy faces who have taken the night off from beating their servants, yes. Everybody in showbiz is here. It's rather like spitting image with laughs. And, as is traditional on this evening, I am hilariously upstaged by a bizarre and strangely camp set. It serves no purpose, but as Descartes observed, I am in the budget, therefore I am. <laughs> Actually, quite a few people this evening have asked if it's supposed to represent Michael Jackson's thriller. I say, no, it's supposed to represent Michael Jackson's career. Now, <laughs> there was, of course, I'm just the messenger. Now, there was a suggestion that tonight's ceremony shouldn't have gone ahead uh, at all as a mark of respect to a man who passed on recently, and let's face it, without whom much of modern British comedy simply wouldn't have existed. However, we understand it was the last wish of Pablo Escobar that tonight's proceedings should <laughs> go ahead as planned. And indeed, I can see many faces here who owe their finest moments in comedy to his tireless effort. And we'll always have those reruns of Malk and Mindy to remember him by, ladies and gentlemen, so... Half of you pretending not even to get that joke. <laughs> so 1993, what a year it has been for comedy, ladies and gentlemen. The new rock and roll, that's what they're calling it. A phrase originated around Badilla Newman, who you may have noted played Wembley Arena on Friday. Yes, Wembley. They're fortunate, of course, they're not managed by Graham Taylor. He'd have left out David Badil and sent on Kenny Lynch instead. <laughs> So, rock and roll or not, it's been a year when we've enjoyed the likes of Absolutely Fabulous, Newman and Badil, The Big Breakfast, The Smell of Reeves and Mortimer, and my own personal favourite, Supermarket Sweep. <laughs> Wonderful show, Supermarket Sweep, based, I believe, on an original idea from Richard Madley, who, before you explain that idea, to the people sitting next to you, he is with us this evening. Now, the next two hours should come close to being a religious experience, because, after all, if God is omnipresent, he has to sit through all this too. The nominations for the awards tonight are submitted by TV and film companies, radio stations, together with theatre and comedy club managements. The honours are judged, voted and awarded by members of the Writers Guild of Great Britain and a jury made up of top executives and programme makers in all the comedy fields represented. However, two of the 22 categories for comedy up for grabs tonight will be decided by you at home, your telephone votes. Last year you voted on just one, but we've decided to expand it to two in 93 because, let's face it, those telephone lines are gold dust. <laughs> the categories that you will be voting for are Best Comedy Series and Best Entertainment Series. The nominees for Best Comedy Series are Absolutely, that's the excellent Channel 4 sketch series Absolutely and not the BBC2 sitcom Absolutely Fabulous, Dave Allen, Hale and Pace, KYTV and The Smell of Reeves and Mortimer. To vote for Absolutely, dial 0891 300 306. To vote for Dave Allen, Dial 0891 300 307. To vote for Hale and Pace, dial 0891 300 308. To vote for KYTV, dial 0891 300 309. And to vote for The Smell of Reeves and Mortimer, dial 0891 300 310. Now, the nominees for Best Entertainment Series are Barrymore, The Big Breakfast, <laughs> Clive Anderson Talks Back, Noel's. <laughs> Graceful under pressure, as always. <laughs> Noel's House Party and Viva Cabaret. To vote for Barrymore, dial 0891 300 301. To vote for The Big Breakfast, dial 0891 300 302. To vote for Clive Anderson Talks Back, dial 0891 300 303. To vote for Noel's House Party, dial 0891 300 304. And to vote for Viva Cabaret, dial 0891 300 305. The lines open now and calls will cost 10 pence each. 
Uh, if you didn't catch those numbers, they're in all the TV listings magazines, although the Radio Times, which recently picked up the award for Magazine Editor of the Year, has swapped the numbers for House Party and The Big Breakfast. <laughs> now, this may be a genuine mistake, or maybe Chris Evans has had a word with them, I don't know. Uh, but to win whatever you want to do, dial the numbers, you know where they are. I offer this comforting thought to those who might not, of course, win on these phone-ins this evening. Please bear in mind that phone-in polls are nothing more than mere popularity contests. <laughs> Right, as Gary Gilmore said just before they shot him, let's do it. The first contenders to be tried by jury tonight are the nominees for top television comedy actor. And to perform the sacred rite of ripping open the envelope and stumbling over the names, a supermodel who has recently taken the revolutionary step of making a fitness video. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Jerry Hall. Jerry, you look absolutely gorgeous. I must say, absolutely fabulous. Was that something else is in? You're absolutely gorgeous, uh, and you do have this fitness video out, which I understand is doing rather well. Mm, yes, it's number one. It's a yoga video. Well, congratulations. Good for you. Thank now, you. you can be frank and as open as you wish here this evening. We're all friends. When you do something like that, what's what's the motivation? Is it <laughs> is it the knowledge that you can help people, you can spread the word about exercise, fitness, or is it just a huge amount of money? You know, you're going to get at the end of the day. <laughs> Do I look like a girl who needs money? Let's move on then to the nominations <laughs> for top television comedy actor. And they are Michael Williams for September Song, Richard Wilson for One Foot in the Grave, and Rick Mayle for Rick Mayle Presents. Before we find out which of these talented trio is going to attract the glares, bile and spittle of his contemporaries, a brief resume of their work. Jack, this is Jim. Two faithful friends for the wilderness. <sighs> Pro-celebrity golf and crooked timeshare endorsements. And, <sighs> and then in a couple of years, we'll get caught speeding on the M25 with an underage girl in the front seat. And you'll help me through the painful divorce and the crippling alimony and the mental breakdown. Then, just when everyone thinks I'm well and truly buried, I will pop up in a double glazing advert or something. <laughs> playing Mother Goose in a some out-of-season panto in the Isle of Wight. <laughs> <laughs> Hello! Is that Mr. Pete T. Sturgeon? Yes, well, it's about a large yucca plant your garden centre delivered to my house this morning. Yes, a young chap, I didn't catch his name. It may have been Frank Spencer. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you exactly what the problem is, Mr. Sturgeon. I was out the back working in the garden when he arrived, so I asked him if, for the time being, he'd put it in the downstairs toilet for me. And you know what he's done? He's only planted it in the... <laughs> Usually, I only ever eat salmon if I've caught it myself, but I'm prepared to take a chance, provided it's absolutely fresh. Don't worry, sir. I fished it out of the freezer myself this morning. Sounds perfectly acceptable. So will that be uh, one salmon or two? Neither. I'll have the lamb. And where would you like it, sir? On your head or down your front? No, I'll have it on a plate. With some chips and peas, and maybe a smidgen of fresh mint sauce to set off the flavor. Oh, and have you any marinated tripe? Only my friend here is a Trappist monk, and he's not used to Western foods. <laughs> Jerry, the, uh, the winner, please. The winner is Rick Mayle. Yeah. So Rick Mayle well, there were three films in that series Rick Mayle presents, and his portrayal of game show host Mickey Love made one or two people in the business, one or two well-known faces squirm, I can tell you. Rick Mayle. Uh, <clears throat> thank you very much indeed. Um, uh, the, you were up the audition last week, weren't you? Ooh, she was. Funny. She was. <clears throat> For the next series of Rick Mayle presents. Um, thank you very much, um, Jerry. <laughs> uh, I'd just like to thank, uh, quickly while I'm here, um, everyone at Granada who, who helped me with it, and uh, in particular the writers, um, <laughs> uh, whoever they were, uh, <laughs> yeah, but, um, uh, Nick Vivian, Peter Morgan, and uh, Peter Learmouth. Uh, in particular, I'd like to thank Andy Harris for um, his um, patience and his tenacity and uh, all the cash. <laughs> thank you very much. Happy Christmas.
It almost goes without saying that any ardent young wannabe can print a business card and virtually overnight claim to be a TV producer. Evening, Your Royal Highness. But it takes an aspiring <laughs> comedian a year of solid achievement to have her card marked top television comedy actress. To announce the name of the female Thesper has advanced her art in 93, a man who I'm sure has Prince Edward's fullest admiration. Someone who has made that difficult transition from wrestler to actor. Please welcome Hulk Hogan. <laughs> Merciless. Hello, Hulk. You, How are you this evening? Uh, now, you're over here for what particular reason? I believe you have some sort of a single, some sort of recorded thing out? Well, I'm here to body slam the pop charts. I have a brand new single, an old song by Gary Glitter called I Am The Leader Of The Gang. And I see you're following Gary's kind of hair treatment as well at the moment. <laughs> um, Hulk, you are, of course, one of the world's, if not the world's, top professional wrestler, so I guess the world of scripted comedy is uh, no stranger to you. <laughs> what do you make, what do you make of, uh, of our British products? Well, it's a bit low-brow for my taste. <laughs> well, so say we all. Uh, the nominations now for Top Television Comedy Actress are Stephanie Cole for Waiting for God, Joanna Lumley for Absolutely Fabulous, and Jennifer Saunders for Absolutely Fabulous. One will go home drunk with success, two will just go home drunk. Roll the clips. <laughs> I pretend to hate you and you pretend to hate me and... I do hate you. <laughs> Why? Because you're a despicable person who's resented me since the day I was born. Before. <laughs> so why should I ever do a favour for you? I'll pay you. No, I'm your mother's best friend. Best friend? What kind of friend are you? What kind of daughter are you? At least she has fun with me. I care about her. Care about her? You may dress like a Christian, but the similarity ends there. <laughs> I, mean, I think you do it on purpose. How long does it take you to get the crease so crisp down the front of your jeans, you torturer? Get out! <laughs> My analyst says I should sort of let you sort it out in your own time and everything. But Jesus Christ, darling! <laughs> not one bloody boyfriend in the whole time that I've known you. I mean, you're not that bloody ugly. What's the matter with you? <laughs> Have you read that karma suitor I gave you? No! <laughs> has only ever seen the light of day. I mean, God! Here I am, your mother, poised for your first sexual experience, and night after night, dry bloody sheets! <laughs> Hulk, the winner, please. The winner is Joanna Lumley. <laughs> Well, wherever you go these days, you can hear ladies of a certain age calling each other darling and sweetie, and I'm sure that's all down to Joanna Lumley and absolutely fabulous. Joanna adds this prestigious award to the BAFTA, which she won earlier in the year. Thank you very much. Um, I didn't really expect to get this. I haven't really got anything to say except for thanks to Jennifer. I wouldn't be here without her, and I actually noticed that she actually isn't here either. <laughs> I'm sure she'll turn up later. <laughs> thanks to the BBC, thanks to John Plowman, thanks to Bob Spears. And thank you for this, it's something I've always wanted. <laughs> thank you. Well done, Joanna. And, you know, I don't want to get your hopes up or anything, but I've noticed in the past that you win one of these awards and then most people do get, start, get, uh, get offers for commercials and all kinds of things and really... <laughs> <laughs> Keep your eyes open for those opportunities. Um, <laughs> this has been the first year of broadcasting for the new ITV franchise holders. An important time for them as they try to make their mark on the network. So it's worth noting that none of them have managed to produce a nominee this year for Best ITV Sitcom. <laughs> Present the award. The stars of the hit West End musical Grease selflessly sacrificing their one night off to plug their show in front of a national TV audience. <laughs> Please welcome Debbie Gibson and Craig McLaughlin. <laughs> you both go over there. It's like a quiz show, isn't it? Just stand oh. over there. Um, <laughs> is it true when you both went off for Grease that you both went for the same part, that of Sandy? 
Interesting enough, I was considered a little too busty. Yeah, oh, there you part, go. Unfortunately. And do the two of you. Excuse me. <laughs> oh, and of course, it's a phenomenal hit, so congratulations on that. Do the two of you, when you go to bed each night, do you just thank heavens you didn't do Eurovision? <laughs> we should get on with this, shouldn't we? Let's get on with it. <laughs> the nominations for Best ITV Sitcom are The New Statesman, an Alamo production for Yorkshire Television, The Upper Hand, Central TV, in association with Columbia Pictures, and Watching from Granada TV. Mirth makers and rib ticklers, all as these fun sized snippets will demonstrate. Is it your birthday? No. Is it mine? No. What's up, Anthony? No, not yet. Come on. <laughs> Drinks, anybody? <laughs> Take that off. Why? Did it spoil the surprise? No, because you haven't had it yet. <laughs> Look at me. Hiya. Malcolm. Yeah. Will you marry me? What? You heard. <laughs> marry you? Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. Right, come on. Uh, but, uh... <laughs> What's happening? Oh, it's an engagement party. Who for? Us. Oh, what a great timing. <laughs> Why should the nation that produced Shakespeare, Dickens, Christopher Wren, Florence Nightingale, and those are just the people on our bank note, for Christ's sake, <laughs> come down to the continent that produced Hitler, Napoleon, the Mafia, and the, 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 the Smurfs? <laughs> You've had four years to plan this. And the best you could do was to sink the car. <laughs> I suppose it's a start. Wow! You really must have been at it. <laughs> oh, my God! Nothing happened. Well, then get back in that car until it does. <laughs> Debbie, the winner is... Watching. Yeah! Now there's uh, Paul Bound who plays Malcolm in the series. He with the overbearing mother. For those who don't know, Watching is set on Merseyside. Features a bizarre relationship between Malcolm and Brenda. He's played by Emma Ray. Also joining him on stage is the writer. And that's Jim Hitchmo. Yes, well, thank you very much. Uh... That's a real surprise after a seven series. It was called a creeper <laughs> earlier, but uh, finished it so long ago that uh, it feels appropriate that we should have the award so late. But thank you very much. Thank I prefer the New Statesman, but I'm not in that, so... Uh... <laughs> this is the uh, writer, Jim Hitchmo, here. Well, well, I'd just like to say thank you very much. So I will. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Last year, the award for top ITV entertain uh, entertainment presenter was won by Des O'Connor. Of course, at that time, no one had an inkling about Pot of Gold, so it all seemed on the level. <laughs> but a year later, one year later, it is time now to usurp the Desertola and crown a new head. Few are called to such an honour, only one is chosen. And to reveal that chosen one, please welcome an actress about to play the part of the Slave of the Wing in Panto, Britt Eklund. <laughs> Love. It weighs a go. tongue. It weighs a tongue? A tongue. Oh, lovely. Uh, it's great to see you. You look fantastic. You're in your Slave of the Ring. That would make it uh, Aladdin, I guess. Aladdin. There you go. Sharp New Victoria Theatre. Woking. You know, there's something I must say to you, and... Um, Black Prado. I'm sure you get this all the time. Do you remember a film you were in? I guess it was early 70s, late 60s, early 70s. The Wicker Man. I Edward remember. Woodward. And you played, I don't know, some kind of a village wench or something. And there's a scene where you're standing completely naked in front of an open window. And you would, if you don't mind, you were sort of banging it. Boom, boom. With, it, with my butt naked. Completely going. And I don't have a question. I just want to say thank you for helping me through those difficult teenage years. <laughs> really. Oh. Thank you so much. Oh. Am I that old? Britt, you're going to read the nominations for us, I Yes, hope. I am. The nominations for top ITV pre entertainment presenter are... Scylla Black for Surprise, Surprise. Dennis Norden for Billy Orlight on the Night 7. And Michael Barrymore. Yet again, yeah. yet again, the work of these controversial artists is considered too avant-garde to be shown before the watershed. Just think of the children who might be watching, ladies and gentlemen. Britt, the decision, please. 
And the winner is Michael Barrymore. Yeah. And Michael really is at the top of the tree. Michael Barrymore at the top of the tree. Now, one of the highlights, of course, of the Royal Variety Show just a few weeks ago. He's just finished recording the ninth series of Strike It Lucky, and a new series of Barrymore is currently in the pipeline. And here are the results of the Swedish panel. <laughs> All right. Enjoying the show, Jonathan? So far, so good. Good Maybe. answer, but it's not great. <laughs> um, well, where do we start? Well, where shall I start? And what shall I say? What shall I do to brighten this evening up? <laughs> Thank you, Michael Barrymore. <laughs> I was born in a trunk at the <laughs> Richmond Theater. Um, <laughs> oh, I've uh, got a card here that was sent to me uh, quite some time ago, which touched, touched me, and uh, I thought I'd bring it out tonight because when well, nobody else is here, so it, mu it must have been me who won. Um, it says, Dear Michael, I, like yourself, have been suffering from depression. And you're one of the few people who cheers me up when you're on the box. You're sincerely a Samaritan. <laughs> Please could you say hello to a very dear friend of mine at the Comedy Awards on Sunday. His name's Greg Dyke. He'll be sitting on the left-hand side of the stage. We were supposed to be having a candlelit dinner this evening, but he chose to come with his wife to see your show instead. <laughs> Tell him I love him and understand his reason for not being with me. <laughs> love, Marcus. Now, um, there are... Yes, I'm leaving for the BBC. Uh, yes, <laughs> there are a lot of people I'd like to thank, and uh, I suppose the best way of uh, thanking them is not me as Michael Barrymore, which is my stage name, but me as myself. So, from me, Angela Lansbury, thank you very much indeed. <laughs> thank you very much. The Governor. We're about to take our first commercial break, but while we do, we want you to, at home to do some work and vote for the best comedy series and the best entertainment series. A reminder of the numbers coming up now. For best comedy series, a category which rewards comedy sketch shows, not sitcoms, if you want to vote for absolutely, 0891 300 306. Dave Allen, 0891 300 307. Hale and Pace, 0891 300 308. KYTV, 0891 300 309. And The Smell of Reeves and Mortimer, 0891 300 310. For best entertainment series, uh, if you want to vote for Barrymore, and indeed why not, 0891 300 301. The Big Breakfast, 0891 300 302. Clive Anderson Talks Back, 0891 300 303. Noel's House Party, 0891 300 304. And Viva Cabaret, 0891 300 305. We'll be back in a few moments with, among other awards, best BBC sitcom, top BBC entertainment presenter, and best new television comedy. Stay tuned. Buy any video from Blockbuster and get this exclusive movie poster calendar free. I think there's an almost primeval thing in us, a desire to travel, to see different things, to see different cultures. 
we were the first organization to publish discounted airfares. We have had our imitators. They can copy the idea, but not the philosophy behind it. Trail Finders has its roots in overland and the more adventurous side, but for some people it's simply exploring a quiet two weeks on the beach. Travel brings a sense of the unknown as to what they're going to find at the other end. Coming home is the final pleasure that traveling gives you. My American Express card has traveled with me for over 20 years. They have a very mature global network. If you've got your passport, you've got your American Express card. If you've forgotten to pack your underpants, this is not going to be a huge problem. American Express is welcomed at trail finders and at good lingerie shops around the world. Precious moments, trésor from Lancôme. Out regular? My body is a temple. I keep it spelt. Lift weights? Sure do. <laughs> Keeps me honed. Boy, I sure <laughs> wish I had your figure. Bet you look forward to a cold filtered Coors. Oh, uh, I drink orange juice. You got the wrong scripts. Okay, give me a hit. Hey, work out regular. My body is a temple. Are you telling me not to interview my prime suspect? New drama next Sunday and Monday on ITV, Prime Suspect 3. Hello there, it's the Grin Reaper welcoming you back to the Comedy Awards with an entire hall full of celebrities treating their parasitic entourages to just a little taste of the high life. Now, I'm only too aware that we're not the only award ceremony on at the moment, so to save you the bother of flicking back and forth, I can reveal exclusively in advance that Linford Christie has won the Sports Personality of the Year. <laughs> it's safe on the wear and tear on your remote control there. Before we uh, carry on our prize-giving bash, let's take our first check on the voting in our money-spinning viewers' telephone poll. Here we go, let's have a look at the update. Absolutely have 15% of the votes so far. Dave Allen has 19%. Hale and Place... Storming to lead with 23% there. KYTV have 12% and the smell of Reeves and Mortimer have a remarkable 31%. There we are. Yeah. Smoking heavily as a result over there. Um, <laughs> let's have a look now for best entertainment series. Have the update on these calls. Barrymore, 43%. Big Breakfast has 16%. Clive Anderson Talks Back has 13%. Noel's House Party, 24%. And Viva Cabaret have... At the moment, 4%. So keep calling. Taking part is good training, of course. Please keep calling. It's good training for our democratic futures. After all, Prime Minister Beadle, it won't happen unless we make it happen. <laughs> you know, it wasn't very long ago that I myself was inundated with unsolicited fly-by-night award polishing services, such is the lot of the winner of the Oracle Best Chat Show host. So it's with not a little poignancy that I roll out the faded red carpet now for top Channel 4 entertainment presenter. Our designated driver for this award, the ever lovely, the ever talented, the ever ready to help out at such short notice, Serena Scott Thomas. <laughs> there we are. Okay. And you're going to read the nominations for us this evening, Serena. I certainly am. Okay. The nominations for top Channel 4 entertainment presenter are... Richard O'Brien for Crystal Maze, Gabby Roslin for The Big Breakfast, and Chris Evans for The Big Breakfast. Yes, we all know it's going to be Chris Evans, but let's go through the mechanics, shall we? <laughs> now, Serena, the foregone conclusion, please. Um, <laughs> the winner is... Chris Evans! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and... 
What a year it has been for Chris and Gabby Rosin, his co-host. Yeah. Uh, they have made Channel 4's Big Breakfast a huge early morning hit. Chris is preparing the late night show, but he won't desert those mornings either. Thanks, Jonathan. Um, I just like to say, it's unbelievable to be here with all these very funny people. There's Michael Barrymore over there, who is a god of comedy. And there's Norman Lamont, who's an even greater god of comedy over there. And Norman Lamont's here. Have you seen him? He's over there. Uh, but I, I just want to say hello to all the Evanses, especially my mum, who will be most chuffed about this award. And also hello to all the Smiths, especially the big one who's in Birmingham tonight. And also um, the fact that I don't really agree with the awards, although they're great on television and they're good to watch, but uh, it's always the wrong people that get them. Of course, my opinion of that might change tonight, but... Uh, it hasn't, because I think the wrong person has got it again, because I think Gabby should get this, because... Uh, yeah. Because I, I've always had all the credit for, the, for everything we've done, and it's, it's not down to me, it's down to Gabby, because she's got to put up with one thing I haven't got to put up with, and that's me. So, <laughs> this is mine, so I can give it to Gabby. So, Gabby, come up here, get it. Ninety-three has been a great year for BBC sitcoms. Once again, the Beeb has had its finger firmly on the comedy pulse of the 90s with its environmentally friendly tale of Tom and Barbara Good, its pithy examination of an underfunded British Defence Force in Warmington-on-Sea, and its controversial portrayal of a dispossessed working-class revolutionary in Tooting. These are, of course, the big guns, but all indications are that the award for best BBC sitcom should be bestowed on a cast that is still developing, not to mention one that is still breathing. <laughs> is that the award? A show these couples whose names have become synonymous with quality entertainment. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the presenters of this morning, the two and only Richard Madeley and Judy Finnegan. <laughs> Hi, Judy. Richard, I want to Nice to see you. You know, I'm a big fan of the show, as I know I've made perfectly clear on any number of situations, as everyone is. <laughs> Seriously, no, William. One thing I love about watching it is, unlike most showbiz double acts, I watch your show and there is really a feeling of, like, a real relationship going on there. <laughs> you're, like, you're almost like a married couple out there. Well, where do you get that idea at all? I think we all know Actually, the truth. Actually, we've, um, we've been living over the brush for ten years, Jonathan. It's a big secret. D Judy's joking, obviously. I mean, I've got a wife and ten children in Croydon, you know. <laughs> no! Well, I'm a weekend. <laughs> Let it all out now. Let's get yes, it out let's early. Get the secrets out. <laughs> the nominations for Best BBC Sitcom are Waiting for God, Absolutely Fabulous, and one foot in the grave. Before the envelope is open, three choice cuts from three choice cuts of comedy. Oh, oh get, that's it. It's as far as I'll go. Yeah. Push yeah. me up. Push, yeah. push. Yeah. 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 Leggings? No, slacks. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, dear. I mean, honestly, what am I going to do? How comfortable are you? Well, on a scale of what? Well, Childbirth. Oh. <laughs> I get a 12 pound baby, no anaesthetic and forceps. I could live with it. I could live with it. What do they look like? Well, a zeppelin in a condom, darling. <laughs> My God. Like the winner, please. Okay, the winner is right. One Foot in the Grave. So, another award is heaped on the show, written by David Rennick. A Christmas special, One Foot in the Algarve, finds the capped crusader Victor Meldrew and his long suffering wife, 
holidaying in the land of sardines and sun. Richard Wilson takes the stage. Thank you. Um, uh, well, I'm totally flabbergasted. Uh, I'm delighted to beat Absolutely Fabulous again, because they're so good. <laughs> uh, usually, David and Susie are here. And no one told me about this. It's not the Saturday Zoo, is it? Oh, no, yeah, think? yeah, no? sure. Well, uh, I, don't you know his programme? No one seems to recognise the... Richard, Richard, <laughs> Richard. Let's just carry on, shall we? Let's just... <laughs> Let's just ignore the past, shall we? All right, all right. Well, I, I'm absolutely thrilled uh, to receive this award and totally speechless. And um, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Hey. There we are. Now, imagine how different this ceremony would be, of course, if it were a radio show. Many of our celebrities, for a start, could have dispensed with glitzy affectations like shirts and shoes, but of course we are on TV and you know it's always nice to see those showbiz toupees getting an airing. We announced the award for best radio comedy now and to break the good news, a man who's been in more comedy vehicles than Coco the Clown. Co-star of the Harry Enfield vehicle, Men Behaving Badly, and now the co-star in the Griff Rhys Jones vehicle, d -Mob. Please welcome the comedy actor's comedy actor, Martin Clunes. <laughs> Martin, you will be reading the nominations for uh, us, I believe. I will, yes. Uh, the nominations for the best radio comedy are Knowing Me, Knowing You, Aha, with Alan Partridge, Jeremy Hardy Speaks to the Nation, and The Nick Revel Show. And the winner is Knowing Me, Knowing You, Aha, with Alan Partridge. Well, Steve Coogan plays Alan Partridge. The character first appeared on Radio 4's Of The Hour. Both that and the Knowing Me, Knowing You transfer to television next year. Steve Coogan takes the stage, along with creator and writer Patrick Marber. Um, thank you very much. i um, terribly sorry that uh, Mr Alan Partridge himself can't be with us this evening, um, because he's an entirely fictional character. Um, <laughs> But this uh, award is really testimony to uh, the creative talents of the team behind Knowing Me, Knowing You, uh, who have managed to persuade an entire nation that he's for real and that he's capable of hitting a nine-year-old child in the face. <laughs> and that is uh, Dune McKeon, Rebecca Front, David Schneider, uh, Patrick Marber, uh, Mr. Partridge's chief wordsmith, and um, Steve Coogan, uh, Mr. Partridge's image consultant. Thanks very much, and thanks to Rachel as well. You're watching the fourth annual Comedy Awards ceremony live from the London studios. Now, those of you who remember the first will know that my character was originally played by Michael Parkinson and was a lot more like the Fonz. But isn't that <laughs> the beauty of hit TV, watching formats develop? I'm almost breathless with excitement to see what Mentor are going to do with happy families. Therefore, <laughs> let us predict the way ahead with best new television comedy. Here bearing the all-important letter, writer, actor, director, none of these seem sufficient to describe the talent that is Mr Stephen Burkoff. Down. Currently, I believe, in a one-man show, Stephen? Uh, that's right, yes. I'm doing that at the Garrick Theatre at the moment. And that is called? Uh, it's called One Man. Oh, right. Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah. That's <laughs> what I found out. And I believe, at some stage in that show, you play, you perform as a dog. Uh, yes. Well, I, the, well, the third sketch is of a dog, and it's, uh, you know, it's quite uh, interesting to play it, because there are not many actors who have played dogs before. So, in fact, the competition isn't so intense. And also, critics can't say to you, well, I saw John Gilgood playing the dog, and uh, he was much better. <laughs> Whereas if you're doing Hamlet, they're always comparing you to every other actor through history. So it does leave the field wide open to cock a leg, so to speak. Well, there you go. <laughs> and I think no one could cock a leg like you could, sir. Thank you very much. Um, and you have with you the winner of the nominations for Best New Television Comedy, which are Absolutely Fabulous, from the BBC, Just a Gigolo, from Central Independent Productions, and The Smell of Reeves and Mortimer, Channel X, for the BBC. Pay attention, sit up straight, and prepare to get three of the best. Are you completely ready? Yes! Oh! oh! Yeah. Well, that's not fair. I wasn't ready. I was too ready then. I was too ready. 
no, look, look, this is stupid. This is stupid. Look, we're going to have to find another way of doing all this. I know. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one, go. <laughs> Mead Road, round Elgin Place, right round the Crescent, across the traffic lights, then back here. To the end of the road and back. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. How long have we got left? Four days, darling. Mm. You didn't <gasps> eat so much, little piggy. <laughs> Stephen, the, uh, the winner, please. Uh, uh, the winner for the... Uh... Uh, for what? I... I'm not paying attention either, mate. Just read it out. Right. It's fine. Right. <laughs> uh, the winner is absolutely fabulous. <laughs> now, the new series of that show, probably the most eagerly awaited programme on television. The writer and star is Jennifer Saunders, the producer is John Plowman, the director Bob Spears. Any disappointment from the BBC Best Sitcom category, Sue spelled here. Um, we, we are absolutely fabulous, which is the only reason we came up with the title in the first place. Um, Jennifer Saunders, who writes it, is here, contrary to, uh, to Miss Lumley's saying earlier. Uh, she actually has arrived. Um, I'd like to thank her, uh, who wrote it. And you mentioned I'm in the theatre as well. Oh, she's in the... Th yes. I'm <laughs> um, in the series called Joking no, Apart at the Strand moment. Theater. Yeah. Um, Strand Theatre. Strand Theatre. Fridays and Saturdays. There are tickets still available for Miss Saunders' performance. Very few. <laughs> We've got new opening titles and new, new series. There's new opening titles for Joking Apart. There's another series of Absolutely, Absolutely Fabulous. Fabulous. Oh, we got new own titles yeah, for that, yes. There is, there's another series. You're going to get bored with this. It's not very interesting. I'd get off now while you're right. the winner. Um, there's a new series starting in January. Thank you very much. Particular thanks to Jennifer and to Bob. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Next up, top BBC entertainment presenter, 1993, and as a spicy sideline to this award, the winner can hear Mike either of the two runners up for death. Oh, I'm sorry, that's a, a link for a ceremony I'm hosting in Iraq tomorrow. No, this award, <laughs> top BBC entertainment presenter, is steeped in honour and prestige and comes with an almost cast-iron guarantee that ITV boss Marcus Plantin will be calling your home number before midday tomorrow. <laughs> to deliver the names of the chosen ones, please welcome the cheeky, chappy, comedy cockney character actor from Bus Strokes and Mulberry, ladies and gentlemen, Carl Howman. <laughs> And Carl, you're going to read these nominations for me? Yes. Well, yes. Now, the British Comedy Awards 1993 nominations for top BBC entertainment presenter are Bruce Forsyth for Bruce Forsyth's Generation Game, Niall Edmonds for Niall Edmonds' House Party, and Angus Dayton for Angus Dayton's Have I Got News For You. <laughs> and the winner is... Niall Edmonds! <laughs> And a big smile from Noel. Still cheerful in spite of the fact that Mr. Blobby was knocked from the top of the pop charts earlier today. Mr. Blobby, of course, just one of the many, many successful features in Noel's house party. Uh, strange emotions. It's amazing how uh, when you sit down there, you think this really doesn't mean very much, but it does mean a lot because this has been a most amazing year for me. Uh, it started off with... Uh, a BAFTA, an Academy Award for the best uh, light entertainment production, uh, and that was one thing, and it gives me the opportunity to say a very big thank you to Michael Lego and to uh, John Beasley and to Guy Freeman and Arch Dyson and the rest of the production team. And then last week I got the ultimate accolade from one of the so-called quality newspapers when I was described as Mr. Blobby's sidekick. <laughs> All these years and I'm now an assistant to seven feet of pink rubber 
He was described in the Sunday Times today as the epitome of British culture, so maybe things aren't too bad. This is uh, a big honour for Crinkly Bottom. In fact, it's probably two inches too big, and we'll have to knock down a few houses to make it fit. But um, it means a tremendous amount to me, and I shall take it back to the village, and no doubt they'll tell me exactly where to put it. Thank you very, very much indeed. Thank you. Before we take a quick comfort break, a reminder of the numbers to ring to vote for Best Comedy Series and Best Entertainment Series. Best Comedy Series, please call for absolutely 0891 300 306 for Dave Allen, 0891 300 307 for Halen Pace, 0891 300 308 for KYTV, 0891 300 309 and The Smell of Reeves and Mortimer, 0891 300 310. And if you want to call in for Best Entertainment Series, please do. You can vote for Barrymore on 0891 300 301. The Big Breakfast, 0891 300 302. Clive Anderson Talks Back, 0891 300 303. Noel's House Party, 0891 300 304. And Viva Cabaret, 0891 300 305. And remember, do phone us, it's not for fun. Among the categories coming up in part three of the Comedy Awards, Top Male Comedy Performer, Best Comedy Film and Top television comedy newcomer. All that and so much more after some glaring product placement. Mrs. Grayson, there is something you must know. Goodness, I'd better sit down. Go on. Ignore everything you've heard. Mercury still guarantee home phone users savings on all UK long distance and international calls seven days a week. Do tell Mr. Grayson to tell the people of Britain, cheerio. Cheerio. We've had some good times here over the After years. After his video, The Helmet's Last Stand, you didn't think there was any more of him left to reveal, did you? 20 years I've been married. The Black Death only lasted four. Well, you're wrong. Roy Chubby Brown is back, and this time he's completely exposed himself. He's got another woman. Roy Chubby Brown, Britain's most outrageously shocking comic, is back in his new video, Exposed. Fantastic. I think he's brilliant. Out of order. The Helmet's Last Stand and Exposed. Roy Chubby Brown's outrageously funny videos from all good video stockists. Win thousands of instant cash prizes, up to £10,000 with cans of Carling, Tenants, Pilsner or Stones Bitter. Yes! I've won 10,000 quid! <laughs> you know how they made the prize pop out? They filled your can with water. Water. <laughs> Grayson! It's your darling wife at home in Hurley. Hello, Mrs G. Mr Chumley Warner rang. He says Mercury still guarantee home phone users savings on all their UK long distance and overseas calls seven days a week. He says you must tell the people of Britain. I shall do so immediately with gusto and plenty of gumph. Goodbye, dear. A gentle tap is all it takes to release each delicious individual segment of a Terry's chocolate orange. Things happen after Buddy does. Héritage de Guerlain, new eau de toilette for men. Citizen of Britain, you are among the first to hear splendid news. Yes, Mercury still guarantee home phone users savings on all UK long distance and international calls seven days a week. With Mercury fighting to bring calling costs down, you, the customer, can't fail to benefit. These are exciting times. Cheerio!
Welcome back, everybody, to the Comedy Awards, where you've just missed a decidedly lukewarm reception to my three-minute bass solo. By the way, our celebrities present this evening may notice a party of men in dark suits walking among them. Please pay them no mind. They are just some executives from Granada Television. LWT have said that you will come with the carpets and the curtains, so just ignore them and <laughs> relax. Now, as I speak, the nation is deciding the best comedy series and best entertainment series of 1993. Let's take a quick check on the latest state of the polls. Let's have an update. At the moment, we have absolutely with 15% of the votes. Dave Allen has 19%. Halen Pace storming into the lead with 23%. KYTV have 12%. And the smell of Reeves and Mortimer, whoa, still way up there with 31% of the vote. Keep phoning in the numbers, of course, it's in your hands. Everything could change over the rest of the program. Let's have an update now on the best entertainment series phone lines. Barry Moore has a stonking 43%. Big Breakfast up there with 16%. Clive Anderson talks back, has 13%. Noel's House Party, 24%. And Viva Cabaret slugging away there with 4%. Your country needs you to make your decision. Call now, all calls will cost 10 pence, so why not stay on the line and chat to our receptionist? But bear in mind, their voices give you little clue as to their actual appearance. <laughs> now, two years ago, I introduced the next category with the following line. Comedy relies on new blood almost as much as the black pudding industry. It got a similar reception back then, so I'd like to do it again for you tonight, where I'm sure I can actually get a ripple with it. You know, comedy, ladies and gentlemen, relies on new blood almost as much as the black pudding industry. <laughs> To present the award for top television comedy newcomer, please welcome the creator of that joke, Mr. Danny Baker. <laughs> Danny, how are you? You know, comedy, ladies and gentlemen, relies on new blood as much as the black pudding industry. <laughs> really, Nick, you can work You that. really work the game. Um, Danny, what say you, me, after the show, how about you, me, Maybe Angus Deaton, let's go out and do a few voiceovers. Just a few, yeah. <laughs> my, I must say, in, in the green room backstage, Jonathan, the, the biggest laugh of the night, despite the fine script, uh, the biggest uh, uh, laugh of the night has been, Hello, Hulk! <laughs> <laughs> well, the, you know me, I think I'm a feat. Now, the, the, nominations, yeah. the nominations for top television comedy newcomer are Joe Brand for Have I Got News For You and The Brain Drain, Steve Coogan for Saturday Zoo, and Lee Evans for the Jack D Show. Three bright young things, but we'll soon put a stop to that. Here are some probably completely unrepresentative examples of their work. I don't know. I, the, I like to watch dancing, though, because it's, it's hilarious. You know, it's like, it really is. It's, it's like the best place to go. Uh, you go to a wedding, right, I swear, and uh, I always stand on the outside and watch the people in the middle. And I swear, the best people to watch are the over 40-year-olds. Now, I don't mean any harm by this, but they've lost all coordination. <laughs> it's, true. it's true, they're in the middle of the floor going like that. I can still do this, sonny boy, oh yes. <laughs> and why does it always turn out to be your bleeding dad? <laughs> Hello, John. I would imagine it's a pretty surefire bet that you won't be asked to join the Chippendales this year. <laughs> <laughs> Me and you both. <laughs> Me and you both, he's coming back at me, good. Um, I like girls with meat on them, you see, so you're in with a chance. Oh, cheers. <laughs> well, actually, uh, I normally keep my weight up so a 20 like you won't fancy me. Because I'm not really having much luck at the moment. I, I went to this nightclub, right, and this nice woman, there, and I, I went up to her, I said, all right, darling. She said, you are drunk. I said, and you are ugly. <laughs> and she said, yeah, but you are drunk and ugly. Right? <laughs> so I said, no chance of a shag then. <laughs> You've got to ask, don't you? You know what I mean? <laughs> anyway. Danny, if you'll be so kind as to read out the winner of uh, Television Comedy Newcomer. Who says no good came of it? The winner's Steve Coogan for Saturday Zoo! Yes, sleazy comic Paul Carp collected a huge following on Channel 4's Saturday Zoo, and as I mentioned already, Alan Partridge, another character, makes his TV debut next year, and Steve just finished a British tour. Oh, yeah, thank you. Um, uh, golly. Um, well, uh, I'd like really to give this to uh, Lee Evans and Joe Brand, but uh, I think I'll probably hang on to it. Um, <laughs> I, I ought to thank uh, Jonathan 
and uh, Saturday Zoo and uh, Channel X and um, Henry Normal, my agent Jan Murphy, and uh, most of all, uh, Patrick Marber for his uh, hard work, his tireless dedication, his inspiration, and for helping me write this, this little script here. All right, thanks very much. Thank you. Steve Coogan, ladies and gentlemen, going on a big one about the things I feel rather about here, much as Tracy Orman must feel about The Simpsons. Well, I can see Clive Anderson checking his acceptance speech, and that can mean only one thing. It's time to announce the winner of the top male comedy performer. Will Clive retain his coveted crown, or will art so cruelly imitate life? The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. <laughs> Lucky, therefore, that we have someone who speaks fluent hurricane. Please welcome one of Britain's favourite comedy performers, Marty Kane. <laughs> Marty, you look stupendous, you look great, and you're in Panda as well, you're doing Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, is that correct? Yes, I am, yes, I'm the evil Red Queen. Oh, well, don't let it get you down. No. Um, the nominations are for Top Male Comedy Performer, and they are as follows. Paul Merton for Have I Got News For You, Dave Allen for Dave Allen, and Clive Anderson for Clive Anderson Talks Back. Just as day follows night, three clips must follow the nominations. They announced the man as well. Oh, that's right, yes. So what, what do you reckon for the, the cup final uh, uh, tomorrow, the uh, Arsenal Sheffield Wednesday? Well, know? the head says Arsenal, but... Yes, uh, and the, the arse says <laughs> Hednall. <Hednall. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> but you were... Uh, right. You were... Uh, come on, right. <laughs> have you ever, yeah. Clive, have you ever had the Glasgow kiss in the show? <laughs> <laughs> You learn the way you get there. Oh, the Belfast kiss. The, the Belfast kiss. kiss. Well, that's even worse. Well, as long, as long as not the French kiss, I'm OK. <laughs> but, uh, please. Make sure that all the crockery and glass things you give to the hostess. Hostess, excuse me. <laughs> We're coming into the side of a mountain. Will you take my glass away from me, please? <laughs> take your teeth out. <laughs> they don't say take your false teeth out. They say take your teeth out. <laughs> People sit there with spoons going... <laughs> Place a pillow on your lap and place your head on the lap. You see that? Sitting there, coming into the side of a mountain with your head on your lap? That's so you can kiss your ass goodbye. Mm. Half an hour on a giraffe? <laughs> not now, I'm not, no, I'm not time really, do I? The, the 24th... Wouldn't mind half an hour on a giraffe, though. <laughs> Very sexy animals, giraffes. You don't need to tell me. Yeah, they can see the police coming, so by the time you sort of get there, you can... Well, that is... <laughs> Marty, you have the envelope. The winner, please. Yeah. And the winner is... Dave Allen. <laughs> Well, Dave Allen has been a professional entertainer for 38 years. He toured with the Beatles back in the 60s. In amongst the comedy, he's done a lot of drama documentaries for television. Thank you. Jesus, well, what's, uh... Thanks for the set. <laughs> it's like my old school. <laughs> Necrophiliac nuns. <laughs> I've been in this business now. I got an award in 1963 for the best newcomer. I don't know what this means. <laughs> but I'm very grateful. I'm very grateful to some old friends, Bill Cotton, Noel Gay Productions, my friend Nick, and uh, people who wrote the show. I am extremely grateful, and I thank all the people that were concerned and involved with it. And thank you also. I think that Next on our comedy menu is the award for Best Television Comedy Drama, a category for which San Marino's 8.3 second goal against England last month arrived just too late to be considered. <laughs> to reveal much of the production, uh, sorry, to reveal much of the production is judged to have had the strongest legs, please welcome an actress with a fine comedy pedigree to go with her straight acting triumphs, ladies and gentlemen, Hannah Gordon. <laughs> Uh, 
OK, well, I believe we're running slightly over time, so I better get straight to the nominations for Best Comedy Drama. And they are Jeeves and Worcester, Carnival Films for Granada Television, The Snapper from the BBC, and Frank Stubbs promotes Noel Gay TV for Carlton. Before the winner is crowned, a glimpse of these three beauties parading their considerable charms. Your master is an extremely worried man, Jeeves. Sir? Stop playing with the hats, Jeeves. I knew you wouldn't like it. Well, not at all, sir. Oh, good heavens, it has its name printed on the inside. How convenient. The Alpine. Did you purchase the article in a shop, sir? Well, of course I bought it in a shop, Jeeves. A department store. Oh, I see, sir, yes. One reads about such places, of course. I was merely wondering whether they also stopped the leather trousering, which would undoubtedly set it off to full effect. Excuse me, mate. Excuse me. Sorry. Yeah, quick, 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 quick. You know, guess who I've just been talking to? Oh, what's his name? Ah, oh, where's he gone? Oh, bum. Look, perhaps you should go and... Oh, this is Ken. Oh, really? Yeah, let's go and stand up about a gent, shall we? You've got your glasses back on. I thought I told you to keep them off. But she couldn't see anything. Excuse me, mate. This is a private conversation. But I feel better with them on. I think she looks stunning with glasses. What are you, Ken? The fashion police? I'm a film director. Are you really, mate? Great to meet you. Frank Stubbs. <laughs> You're pregnant, you said? Yeah. That's lovely, that is. You sure? Yeah, sort of. What? Yeah. Positive now. You're only 19. You're 20. You're only 20. I know what age I am. Don't start getting snotty with me. I'm the one who should be getting snotty with you. Sorry. It's shocking, that is. What do you think? I don't know. The best you can do. Well, what do you think? I don't know. <laughs> Should get out, I suppose, or, or throw a wobbler or something. But what's the point? <laughs> Hannah, the envelope, please. The winner is the snapper. <laughs> Produced by Linda Miles, directed by Stephen Frears, and adapted by Roddy Doyle from his own novel. And the snapper is set in the hurly burly of the Curly household in Dublin. It's about survival, optimism, and winning through, says the producer. It's moving and it's very, very funny. I'm sorry, we're rather serious people, but thank you very much indeed. <laughs> Now you see, that's class, and that, that is class. And so we come to Best Comedy Film 1993, and in a sense, why not? To present the award, a distinguished presenter of TV, documentaries about films and filmmakers, and the author of a seminal book about incredibly strange films out now in all good bookshops, an ideal Christmas gift at just $9.99, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jonathan Ross. And the nominee for Best Comedy Film are Groundhog Day, much Ado About Nothing, a Ken Branner production featuring some of Ben Elton's finest work. <laughs> and Strictly Ballroom. And I have the envelope here, I believe. No, I don't. Here it is. And the winner is... Groundhog Day. So, what are the chances of getting out today? Fans still won't start. Larry's working on it. Wouldn't you know it. Can I buy you a drink? Jim Beam, ice, water. For you, Miff? Sweet vermouth and the rots with a twist, please. What are the chances of getting out of town today? The van still won't start. Larry's working on it. Oh, wouldn't you know it? Can I buy you a drink? Okay. Uh, sweet vermouth, rocks with a twist, please. For you, Miff? The same. <laughs> That's my favorite drink. Mine, too. It always makes me think of Rome. The way the sun hits the buildings in the afternoon. Huh. Well, what should we drink to? To the groundhog. I always drink to world peace. <laughs> Buy you a drink? Okay. Uh, sweet vermouth, rocks with a twist, please. For you, Myth? The same. 
That's my favorite drink. Mine, too. <laughs> it always makes me think of Rome. The way the sun hits the buildings in the afternoon. Well, what should we drink to? I like to say a prayer and drink to world peace. <laughs> To receive the award for Best Comedy Film, the director of Groundhog Day and star of the Ghostbusters movies, please welcome Harold Ramis. Yes, indeed, a fine film, as you probably gathered. The day repeats itself, but only Bill Murray remembers. Oh. I'm going to... Thank you. I'm going to keep walking up here till I get it right, <laughs> I guess. Um, I, I have people to thank. My co-producer, Trevor Albert, uh, my co-screenwriter, Danny Rubin, our wonderful cast, led by Bill Murray and Andy McDowell, cinematographer, John Bailey, our great editor, Pembroke Herring, and our composer, your countryman, George Fenton, and my wife, Erica Mann, for all her support. Uh, they say comedy doesn't travel, but uh, given the popularity of a strictly ballroom and much ado about nothing in the States, and considering this award, I think it does travel and I'm very proud and happy to receive it. Thank you very much. Congratulations, sir. Groundhog Day, a very fine film about a man doomed to repeat the same thing again and again, much like hosting the British Comedy Awards. <laughs> We're going to take a commercial break, and while we do so, please contribute to our hilarity hustings by voting for Best Comedy Series and Best Entertainment Series. You only have a few minutes left, so dial, dial, dial for the British Comedy Awards. When we return, the awards for top female comedy performer, top live stand-up comedian, and the result of your telephone votes for best comedy series. Back soon. Loves surprises. I'm gonna get Joanna something she's wanted for absolutely ages. <laughs> she's always in the bathroom, my sister, just like me. I love it. Who cares that you find just the right present? Boots. We care because you do. So, Mrs. Farms, your husband's a bit of a ladies' man. Um, no. Fond of a drink or two? He's teetotal. Shame. Any gambling debts? He never takes risks. Hardly a rogue, is he? So, what are the grounds for this divorce, then? Well, I sent him out for some after-dinner mints, and he bought... Well, let's just say they weren't Bendix. Ah, mental cruelty. <laughs> Bendix of Mayfair, Britain's finest mints. <laughs> Aston Martini. The time is now. Seiko Kinetic. So, how's your new girlfriend? Oh, you'll see her. She'll be here soon. And you're eating onions? Yeah, I love them. She's gonna love your onion breath. Doesn't matter. I've got double mint. After you eat, have some double mint. Double mint, double fresh. For that moment of double freshness, just when you need it. How about a nice DJ with black velvet lapels and rather cheeky return cuffs? Hello? You're having problems, mate. Frankly, since the end of the world, the bottom's fallen right out of the ready-to-wear market. Well, there's no point in worrying about it. Why not help me look for this? The amber nectar. The golden throat charm. It's the end of the world! Who's gonna wear dinner jackets, right? <laughs> Little hit, pretty 
This is Jonathan Ross, your television friend, welcoming you back to part four of the Comedy Awards, trading on Sunday for your convenience. Before we make our next award, uh, let's take a look at the state of the poll for best comedy series. Absolutely, have 13% of the votes at the moment. Dave Allen has a very good 25%. Harlem Pace, oh, up there with 27%. KYTV has 7%, and The Smell of Reeves and Mortimer is still in the lead with 28%, but only just. This is getting very close. Meanwhile, the vote for Best Entertainment Series stands as follows. Barrymore, 36%. Big Breakfast, 20%. Clive Anderson Talks Back, 11%. Noel's House Party, whoa, 32%. And Viva Cabaret, 1% there. Looks like it's going to be Noel and Michael Barrymore wrestling nude on the rug to decide this evening. Now, stand-up comedy is an art best appreciated in a sleazy, smoke-filled dive with at least half a dozen pints inside you, conditions that have been lovingly recreated by our studio audience here this evening. To present the award for top live stand-up comedian, please welcome Danny LaRue. <laughs> Danny, you look great. There you are. Make no mistake, it's Christmas. <laughs> I'm Danny. a fairy on top of the tree, dear. <laughs> Danny, the nominations, please, sir. The nominations for stand-up comedy, Miss Jo Brand. <laughs> Jack D. <laughs> Eddie Izzard. And the winner, please, sir. The winner, Eddie Izzard. And a rare opportunity to see Eddie Izzard on television. He's turned down many lucrative offers by both the BBC and Channel 4. Uh, but nevertheless, he's built up a following over the past five years, and now he can sell out theatres right across the country. Congratulations, young man. Where is it? I use, oh, my, I use my bus pass yeah. to come and do this. Congratulations. Thank I'm you delighted. very much. Can I have the tights when you finish with them? Yes, you can. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, shut up. Um, <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, it's heavy. It's got stuff on it. Um, thank you very much to the ward. Uh, yeah, very groovy. Um, um thanks. Uh, oh, I can speech, haven't I? Yeah. Um, I thought people weren't supposed to plug things up here, but everyone's plugging everything. So anyway, but I don't have a video in the shops at the moment. Price is twelve ninety nine, so you don't need to buy that. Uh, but apart from that, thank you very much. Good night, cheers. Thank you. <laughs> You can safely say, I think, that Channel 4 has, without doubt, some of the very best sitcoms currently to be seen on British television. Unfortunately, being American, none of them is eligible for the category of best Channel 4 sitcom. <laughs> to build the contenders for one of TV's top awards, please welcome the former Chancellor of the Exchequer, or even the Exchequer, I'm just so excited. <laughs> yeah, you are watching the British Comedy Awards. Here he is, Mr. Norman Lamont MP. Right then, um, you know, now, Norman, do you like a good laugh? I try to give a few. Do you watch a lot of TV? I watch a lot of TV. More now than you used to? A little bit more. OK, well, we have the nominations for Best Channel 4 sitcom, and they are Desmond's from Humphrey Barclay, Drop the Dead Donkey from Hattrick, and Nightingale's from Alamo. Three brands of top comedy. Which one has that extra 17.5% Writers Guild appeal? Find out after these. And what about the Shetlands? Yeah. Why can't I cover it? You know perfectly well we don't allow you to cover oil spills anymore. Not since that business with the grease gun and the guillemots. <laughs> yes, well, I think our coverage has been a little lacklustre. We only had oil that was leaking, whereas the BBC had pouring and ITN had spewing. Well, they're very vulgar. We need to go one better. I think our oil should be vomiting. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and let's get some bigger dying sea life. We had an oil-drenched whelk last night. <laughs> well, it just wasn't good enough. The season of goodwill to all men, eh, lads? <laughs> you don't mean that, lads, do you? Look, come on, we're here. We might as well make the best of it. Come on, let's have our carols. Oh, oh carols, What do you sir? think? Now, what's the point? No, it's the same every year. Nobody ever bothers to turn up to listen. Yeah, look at all the invitations we sent out. We did not get one reply. No, all those people, right? Harold Pinter, the Pope. Yeah, you think at least the Pope might have done He could have spared two minutes of his time, couldn't he? Yeah. I mean, God, I'd have given my right arm to kiss the papal ring. <laughs> I'll be busy. I'm sure Spider will turn up. He knows the journalists are due to arrive at two o'clock. Oh, by the way, they suggested a photo opportunity with you in the barber's chair, Father. Right. So try and vaguely look like you know what you're doing. You mean like he's been trying to do for the last 30 years? <laughs> <laughs> Desmond, you like? Sip, sip, sip. Norman, unaccustomed as I know you are to public speaking, if you could open the envelope and read out the winner for us, please. The winner is Drop the Dead Donkey. <laughs> Set in a busy television newsroom, that of Globe Link News, which say the team behind the series is a shrine to the art of news gathering where staggering talent, staggering egos, and, uh, well, simply staggering go hand in hand. That's director Lydia Aldroyd. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> thank you. Um, well, I, I accept this award with, with mixed feelings as I had uh, a quid on Nightingales on the table sweepstake. Um, I, my my co-writer, Andy Hamilton, uh, can't be here tonight as he's a, a sane and well-balanced man and prefers <laughs> to spend the evening with his family. <laughs> um, I'd, I'd like to thank uh, Channel 4, Hattrick Productions, and um, Lydia's going to thank the cast, who by a vote decided not to come up here tonight. So they're very modest indeed. Thank you. I only went off because there's so many of them. I'll have to start in order, and I'm sure my voice is always like this. Uh, we start with Victoria Wicks, uh, David Swift, Jeff Rawl. Um, we get to oh, Ingrid Lacey. We get to Neil Pearson, Steve Tompkinson, Susanna Doyle. And if I've left anyone out... Oh, I'm, oh, I'm Rob Duncan. I'm so sorry. I hate being the teacher, but thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Mr. Norman Lamont there. You are watching the Comedy Awards, a show positively dripping with irony. The lines are now closing for your votes for Best Comedy Series, and we'll have the result for you in just a couple of minutes. Now, you know, it's a measure of how much progress we men have made that we no longer debate whether women are funny. Performers like Lily Savage and Dame Edna have average have surely cleared that question up for good. Although I notice that they've both been shamefully ignored in the category of top female comedy performer this year. To present this award, Britain's top comedy vegetable, the man who had the vision to get on that funky moped and ride, 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 please welcome Mr. Jasper Cowart. <laughs> Am I? Yes, you are indeed. Good to see you, Jasper. How are you? What are you up to? Absolutely nothing. Good. Good. Okay. We should get that <laughs> For the nominations, <laughs> the top female comedy performer, and they are <laughs> Helen Atkinson Wood, KYTV, <laughs> Moena Banks for Absolutely, <laughs> and Dawn French and Jennifer Saunders for, of course, French and Saunders. <laughs> and you won't be surprised to hear that we do have some clips. What's the best way to start a holiday? Bar none. Almost. It's actually the Bar Fortuna. <laughs> <laughs> the sands of time are fast slipping away here. But just time to let you know that this costume is from my own clothing company. And it's been specially designed to be worn during the menstrual cycle. <laughs> what I call a period costume. <laughs> when packing, make sure not to include any household pets. Quarantine laws can be very strict nowadays, and they'd be bound to show up on the X-ray scanner. In the <laughs> Why do you think they want us to do these shows, Jennifer? To get awards, <laughs> <laughs> trophies, I guess. 
I never did keep my trophies. No, you ate yours. <laughs> the nice Chianti. Yeah. And the old lady can have her hair cut purple if she wants to. <laughs> She does kiss you. You just have to get yourself made up. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't bring any with me. Oh, never fear, I'll do it. I've made up the best of them. And if I can make Margaret Rutherford look normal, I can certainly do something for you. <laughs> Margaret Rutherford, she was great in white spirit. Yes, lovely woman, but face like an asshole. <laughs> uh, the nomination for top female comedy performer. Jasper, will you do me the honour of winning the weeder? Or no, winning the winner? you do it. <laughs> <laughs> the winners are... Dawn French and Jennifer Sondo for French and Sondo. Well, not just comedy partners, but also the best of pals. Uh, they both pursue successful solo careers, but it was great to see them back on the box together earlier this year. There's been no doubt here, they're in the West End at the moment. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Well, no danger of not having your own category. Um, <laughs> uh, Dawn would be here tonight, but she hates this sort of thing. Um, I don't know why they're such relaxing and therapeutic affairs. Um, I'd like to thank Bob Spears and John Plowman, our producer and director. Thank you very much. And thank you, of course, to Jasper Carrot there. Uh, comedy is a democracy, ladies and gentlemen, and you, the British people, have spoken. You have dialed in your votes for Best Comedy Series 1993. Allow me now to act as returning officer. The results for Best Comedy Series 1993 are as follows. Absolutely, you have 12% of the votes. Dave Allen received 24%. Hale and Pace, 26%. KYTV, 8%. And The Smell of Reeves and Mortimer, 30%. <laughs> Well, you, you see, it just goes to show those redial buttons do come in handy at home. <laughs> I therefore declare that the aforementioned series, The Smell of Reeves and Mortimer, has been duly elected as the winner of Best Comedy Series 1993. Jim and Bob, please take the stage. Jim Big Jim Boyer, which is the real name of Vic Reeves, his partner is called Bob Mortimer. And they moved from Channel 4 to uh, the BBC. Didn't lose anything in success, though, pushing back the boundaries oh, of humour. That goes up front, Very nice indeed to check there, what, tonight. And thank you very much, John Burke, and like I was a director. That's right, it's John the director. That's right. Jonathan, your grave's a bit on the piss here, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> a little bit. But, well, uh, no. Yes, exactly. Sure. You're but, a very uh, confident young man. Very. <laughs> but uh, this is our second award of this type tonight, and I must say it's very marvellous for in bright sunlight for using as a prism to light fires. Yes, you like the fact you can see through it, don't you, Jim? And uh, <laughs> Jonathan, I but why are you hiding? Are you? <laughs> Should we leave now or in a good fire? Go now. Thank you. We've some more to John, John, John Birkin. <laughs> I think, um, I think you'll agree that the spontaneity of that speech certainly uh, leaves you no doubt that these uh, polls are for real. Um, now, within the next few minutes, the lines for Best Entertainment Series will close, so here's one last look at the numbers for that. You could still order the course of comedy history, so keep your votes coming in. We'll be right back after these important messages. <laughs> Why are more people than ever getting into a brand new Vauxhall? Could it be our rather clever Choices 1, 2, 3 plan? An initial deposit, and you're off. Then, after an agreed period, the choice is yours. You could keep it, you could trade it in for any other new Vauxhall in the range, or simply walk away. Choices 1, 2, 3. It's cleverer than the Never Never. No, <laughs> no. 
Le Piador. Dry white wine. Obsession. Obsession. Obsession for men. Calvin Klein. A commercial for an ordinary hand blender would finish about now. But this is a commercial for the Braun Multiquick, which by adding this, lets you do this. And by adding this, lets you do this. And this, and this, and this, and this. You're not on the scrounge again. Look, I just want a body of energizers. You're having a laugh. You know it took me ages to get them back the last time. Oh, go on. I know they last longer than ordinary SP batteries, but I do want them back. I know. Can I finish, mate? No, you don't have to go on. I can afford to go on. I've got Energizer batteries. Energizer. Longer, 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 longer lasting batteries. Columbia TriStar presents... Robin Hood. The first action hero and the last word in comedy. Robin Hood, Men in Tights. Get the one thing from Michael Bolton. It's his new album, and it's out now. I love you. Always love you. I love you. Obsession. Obsession. Love you. I love you, Kate. Malabu, the sun always shines when it pours. This winter, Choices 123 has even lower regular payments on all Cavaliers and other selected Vauxhalls. Better hurry, they're going fast. Welcome back to the British Comedy Awards, the show that's become as much a part of your Christmas as buying a puppy that you'll kick out on Boxing Day. Let's now take uh, our last update on the voting for Best Entertainment Series before the result is announced. Here's the latest update. Barry Moore has received 35% of all votes so far. Big Breakfast have 19%. Clive Anderson Talks Back has 11%. Noel's House Party has received 34%. And Viva Cabaret have 1%. Just one percent of the votes difference between Bowmore and Noel Edmonds' house party, and of course the votes are still coming in. Uh, so somebody might still feel the benefit of a late swing, as they say. <laughs> now, comedy writers are dynamic individuals doing a dangerous job. Notoriously attractive to the opposite sex, they are renowned for their intelligence, rapier wit, and ability to knock out critics with a single blow. Without writers, virtually everyone in this room would, within a year, either crack up or quit the business completely. It may be noted that tonight is the first anniversary of the royal family firing theirs. So the award for top comedy writer should be treated with dignity, respect, and not a little hard cash. To tell us more about the award and the winner, please welcome the president of the Writers Guild, Alan Plater. I have a visible script. So I believe in visible scripts. And it says, thank you very much, at the top. And it continues, as president of the Writers Guild of Great Britain, it's a great joy to be here this evening. Indeed, after 30 years of working in television, it's a relief to be anywhere on a Sunday evening. <laughs> the Writers Guild exists to persuade people that uh, the writers who produce television, radio, cinema, the theatre, and books are the most important people in the history of the human race yes. and should be valued accordingly. It's a tough job and it's taking a week or two. When we get disheartened, we play silly games, like we all join hands and see if we can make contact with John Burt or the Central Controller. <laughs> Tonight is different and special. Tonight, for the fourth year, we are delighted to be part of this celebration of the serious business of comedy. 
The next award recognizes the ancient truth that behind every fine comic performance, there's an equally fine writer, sometimes paranoid and in long-term therapy. But occasionally, the writer wins a major prize, and that makes everything all right. To announce this year's highly talented recipient of the award, and I'm told by Anthony Mingella that he's a really nice guy as well, we decided in the interest of balance to have somebody taller and younger than I am with a full head of hair. As it happens, I'm supposed to be writing serious words for this man at the moment, so don't tell him I'm here. But please welcome my good and valued friend, Mr. Lenny Henry. <laughs> Visible speech, I don't mess around. Um, <laughs> good evening, great to be here. Oh, sorry, wrong. Um, nice to see so many of my black brothers and sisters in the house tonight. <laughs> um, just kidding, Michael, right on. You know, <laughs> it's a good show as well, you know, easy. Folks, I can't wait to get home and watch this on the video, and not just because I'm a sex god, but um, <laughs> mainly to see the look on Richard Curtis's face when the camera cuts to him, because uh, he's actually won this. And uh, Richard Curtis is one of the most, uh, hang on, wait a second. You'll get a chance to clap in a minute. Um, Richard Curtis is one of the most modest, man I've ever met, modest men I've ever met. And I know the next few minutes are gonna be absolute torture for him. And all I can say is, Dick, your torture is my pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to pay tribute to Richard Curtis the man. Richard Curtis the woman is his business. <laughs> He's an incredibly nice man. That's the thing about him. He's a good friend of mine. He's a great listener. He's an encourager of new comedy writers and new comedy writing. And he's a great shag. And, um... <laughs> He's a prodigious talent. Um, he wrote for Not the Nine O'Clock News, Blackadder. Uh, he co-wrote Blackadder. He co-wrote uh, and co-created Mr. Blee, Mr. Bean. <laughs> Mr. Bean, uh, he wrote Burden and the Genie. Let's not forget the Rowan Atkinson live shows. I mean, who can forget that brilliant Rowan Atkinson schoolmaster set where Rowan came on and went to uh, blob, pear, <laughs> Classic comedy. And, um... <laughs> Dick is also the driving force behind Comic Relief. He devotes an incredible amount of time to it, and he makes it huge fun for everybody. And no one has written funny and gags for charity, let's face it. So, uh, <laughs> I actually met him when I was uh, doing the first ever Comic Relief show, and Dick had written the Romeo and Juliet sketch for me and Frank Bruno. And he rehearsed it with us over and over again, and he used to take Frank into corners and practice with him, and I just heard this voice over and over again saying, Yeah, Dick, but what's my motivation, you know what I mean? <laughs> Richard has a genius. Richard has a wonderful genius, thank God for Comic Relief's sake, for making TV celebrities do anything, you know? I mean, one minute they're saying, Dickie, love, I don't know about filming in a war zone. The next is, Lenny Henry, News at 10, Somalia. <laughs> so, um, but the most amazing thing about Dick Curtis is that he's a comedy writer who actually writes. <laughs> he's the only comedy writer in Britain who's never seen This Morning with Richard and Judy. <laughs> he goes out with Emma Freud and stays in with a word processor. I actually remember going around to his house once to have a look at the four-page story outline for Bernard and the Genie, because it was well overdue, and uh, the producers were getting a bit worried, you know, so I went around there to look at it. And he hadn't done the four-page outline. He'd actually written a 75-page script. It was incredible, you know. We were so shocked we filmed it. <laughs> so, um, I'd like to say I'm really, really, really pleased that Dick's won this award. He really deserves it. He's a very, very talented man indeed. So, Dick Curtis, Mr. Quality and Quantity, Mr. Naughty but Nice, these are your clips. Roll them. One of us is ugly, one of us is cute. One of us you'd like to see in her birthday suit. Two of us write music to a white house song. Sorry in translation, that line from that line. But still super duper, it's super duper. That we're number one again. Singing super duper duper makes the super duper. <laughs> The bravest swordsman in the land. Oh, don't tell me that's that ill from Norfolk. Prince of Duke of Edinburgh. Precisely. Or, as I shall be known from now on, the Black Vegetable. <laughs> <laughs> My lord, wouldn't something like the Black Adder sound better? No. Wait. I think I have a better idea. What about the Black Adder? Look, there is just one thing I'd like to make clear to avoid any embarrassment later. 
I'm sure you know. Just because you take a girl out to dinner, it doesn't mean she's got to go to bed with you. No, no. Absolutely, I'm not... Oh, my God. Absolutely not. No. Yeah, well, the thing is, I'm not the sort of girl who believes in that. I think it's much better to go to bed with the person on the first date to get it out of the way. Just kidding, we have a major league cod piece full of entertainment for you tonight, featuring just about every single funny person in the country, and Jonathan Ross is here too. Uh, is this suit cool or what? If anybody here mentions oven ready turkeys, they're dead. Today's been an absolutely fantastic day. All over the world, people have been doing mad things for comic relief. Michael Jackson has been sponsored to make an exact replica of himself out of all the leftover bits of himself. Should be enough for two there, Mikey, don't you think, eh? Uh, Madonna's been sponsored to keep her clothes on, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Prince Edward has been sponsored to make a TV film of his life story. It's going to be called A Walk on the Wild Side. Uh, <laughs> music by Andrew Lloyd Webber, lyrics by Ed the Duck, and um, we also have an audience here for you who love to go... <laughs> yes. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen... Thank you very much indeed. I'm very um, surprised by this, and I've been lied to by all the people I trust. <laughs> um, I, uh, I, um, I don't quite know what to say. I, I, I always used to complain that Rowan never thanked me whenever I... Uh, whenever he won awards. Um, but nowadays, he's taken the lesson to heart and he thanks me and um, attributes everything to me, including the birth of his child. Um, <laughs> but I will thank him. And also, um, Ben, without whom the Blackadder would have been a nice, clean-cut kids' show. Um, <laughs> and also, uh, um, if any of this is for comic relief, it is, of course, uh, not mine at all, but everyone's who uh, remorselessly helps us in everything that we do, both the public and all of you um, who do help us, and I hope you'll allow me one grace call from now on. And uh, all the people, of course, who do um, the work that Comic Relief supports. Um, I'm very grateful. Uh, I haven't written a joke in 19 months now, and um, maybe this will uh, cause me to. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Now, the, uh, the Comedy Awards may misfire occasionally. Last year's funniest artist impression on Crime Watch was, with hindsight, demeaning to the overall standard, but the category for top variety entertainer remains one of the proudest gongs in our cupboard, rewarding those dancing, singing, gag machine entertainers who still give you the best value for your comedy pound. The nominees for this high office are Michael Barrymore, Ken Dodd, and Victoria Wood. And the winner is... Ken Dodd. Yeah. Now, I'm afraid uh, Mr Dodd isn't here this evening. He's working, probably got a big heating bill to pay. But waiting in the wings up at Manchester Palace Theatre, where Ken is live on stage, is our man, Tony Slattery. Hello, thanks very much, Jonathan. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Well, the British Comedy Awards have flown me up to Manchester on economy class standby, and I'm here in the wings of the theatre. In the wings, there's Claire Rayner, upside down in a sink over there, and I'm about to go on stage to interrupt this performance of Dick Whittington to give this award to one of the comedy greats of the 20th century. So I'll just choose my moment. Oh, this is a good trick, kids. This is, every, every farmer should have one of these for Christmas. You know what this is? It's a shoehorn. <coughs> hey, how's that? Excuse now, me, this uh, excuse me. Um, Ken, uh, excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, sorry for interrupting. Uh, Ken, 
<laughs> Ken Dodd. I know you. <laughs> they, 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 you know, this. You want your, your thingy up for television? Your who's it? What do we call it? Oh, it's on the tip of me. <laughs> Tony <laughs> Slattery. It yes. is. It's Tony Slattery. Hello. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> What are you doing on our stage? Are you looking for a job? Uh, all right, all right. Well, do, you need, do you need a wishy-washy? All right, I'll be wishy-washy, all right. Well, you will, you have to go to the wrong theatre. You're down at Aston on the line. <laughs> Fine, so okay. Uh, Ken, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I'm here on behalf of the British Comedy Awards Ken. Ken. to present you with the 1993 Top Variety Performer Award. Ladies and gentlemen, Ken Dodd. <laughs> Like say a few words. <laughs> I'm doing my part, doing my stuff. I thought you were the man from the VAT. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I knew it. <laughs> well, this is wonderful, Edmund. I, I must admit, top top school. Well, I've always enjoyed being a comedian. Yes, I'm going to say that. I think I've always enjoyed the sound of laughter. I think the sound of laughter is the most beautiful sound in the world. And it's, this is a marvellous way to start our pantomime season. This is Dick Whittington, you know. Oh, yeah, Dick Whittington. This is the Manchester Palace. Just in case anybody knows. <laughs> this, uh, <laughs> this is. Never let, never let a plug go by. Ken, could I also uh, just interrupt before you get into the fourth hour of the acceptance speech? Um, there's, a, there's, a, there's another award to... Uh, um, no, th you can't do this, it's your life. It's been no, done. it's not. No, no, there's another award for you to go under the mattress. It's this one. It is the Writers Guild of Great Britain Lifetime Achievement Award for Comedy. Ken Dodd, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I'd like to say how absolutely tatterfulurious, how absolutely tatterfulurious, how absolutely full of plumptiousness I feel tonight, Mrs. I'm terribly full of turkeyfication and with a great feeling of duffish, duffishness. <laughs> duffishness, I'd like to say how completely ghoulified I am tonight, ladies and gentlemen. I've never been so tickled in all me dicky mint. And <laughs> by Jove, what a beautiful day. What a beautiful day for a new adventure, as the termite said when he crawled into the wooden leg factory. What? <laughs> You know, they were standing on the steps of the TUC headquarters and shouting a four-letter word. Work! What? <laughs> what a beautiful day! And so we come to the final two awards. The lines for Best Entertainment Series have now closed, which is just as well. I noticed the hair on some of the celebrities here is starting to return to its natural colour. Ironically, it might just be time to say those dreaded words, all joking aside because in a few seconds we shall know who is the supreme ruler of the comedy universe. The top television comedy personality in 1993. To crown the king or queen of comedy, who better than the man never known to go for a single entendre when a good solid double would do? Please welcome Julian Clary. <laughs> Julian, good to see you. How's it hanging? Oh, very well, thank you. <laughs> very nice of you to recreate hamster teeth for me here. <laughs> yeah. As a matter of fact, uh, I've just been fisting Norman Lamont. <laughs> Let me ask you, Julian. Talk about. Julian. Talk about the red box. <laughs> so, so how did you jump to the front of the queue then? Just clawed my way through. Yeah. <laughs> Are we still on? Um, you're going to read the nominations for us, Julian? Certainly, oh, yes. Bless you. Okay. <laughs> The nominations for the top television comedy personality are... <laughs> Paul Merton. He's good in bed. <laughs> Joanna Lumley. Nice big hair. <laughs> Clive Anderson. Nice big neck. Julian, please, as only you can, open the envelope. Okay. 
and the winner is Joanna Lumley. And the second award for Joanna Lumley tonight, or that she's received the award for a top TV comedy actress. That was earlier on in the program. And now she is the top television comedy personality. That's not the dishwashing powder, too. Thank you. <laughs> I just want to men mention four people who haven't um, been mentioned tonight, although we've seen quite a lot of them. That's June Whitfield. Julissa Walha, Jane Horrocks, and um, Ruby Wax, without whom I wouldn't have met that little tiny, little sort of person, Jennifer. <laughs> and, uh, thanks to Jennifer. Actually, as I got up, I said, this can't be me. And she said, no, because you haven't got a personality. So <laughs> thanks, Jen, and thank you. I'm really so proud. Thank you very much indeed. You're watching the British Comedy Awards, the glittering jewel in family entertainment TV's crown. <laughs> uh, the Crime Mice have now finished counting your telephone votes, and we have a clear winner for the Best Entertainment Series 1993. Over three quarters of a million votes were cast this evening. Please welcome to present the award, one of the kings of the square circle, a fully paid up professional in the sweet science of bruising, still the undefeated WBO Super Middleweight Champion of the World, Mr. Chris Eubank. <laughs> How are you doing, Chris? I'm very well, thank you. Oh, you see? <laughs> there you go. Remember the old days we used to spar, you and me? Anyway. <laughs> uh, I'm going to read the results now from the chart, and then we will jointly declare the winner, because, of course, this has been the phone-in. Let's have a look now and find out who the winner is. Barrymore has received 39% of the votes. The Big Breakfast have received 18% of the vote. Clive Anderson, Talks Back, has received 10%. Noel's House Party has received... 32% of the votes, Viva Cabaret, have received 1%. That means that Barrymore is the nation's favourite. Michael Barrymore. Come on up, sir. And two awards of Michael Barrymore tonight. The new series of Barrymore is being prepared at the moment. As I mentioned a little earlier, the ninth series of Strike It Lucky already in the can. Thank you very much indeed. Um, in, show, in show business, you can pick up a lot of things, but twice in one night is uh, silly. Um, <laughs> I'd like to thank, obviously, everybody at home for, for voting for me, for those who didn't, and obviously, I'd like to thank Viva Cabaret for making the difference. Well done. <laughs> and thank you for the entertainment as well. Uh, obviously, all the production team. You can come a bit nearer, Chris. You're all right. It's the final one. It's a dinner suit affair, by the way. Uh, it's, um... <laughs> uh, no, you'll be all right. Yeah, OK. All right. And, uh... So, string fellas afterwards, eh? Yeah. My wife remember the year, we'll work it out. Oh. Right, well, I've got my wife, we can... Yeah. OK, well, anyway, thank you very much. In... <laughs> Thank you very much indeed to all the production team, to uh, Maurice Leonard, the producer, Alan Harding, everybody, all the cameramen who work here. This is the place where we make Barrymore. And uh, as you can see, uh, this, everybody's mentioned about the set. It is wonderful. And wasn't that wonderful of Gillian Clary? I thought it was a brilliant uh, line there. Would we just like to go over it again? Just I, um... <laughs> let's, um... <laughs> let's, uh... Let's do it for the, the viewers who have impaired hearing at home, shall yes. we? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Well, there you go. We had so much to give, and now we're all spent. Um, I think it's been a fabulous evening, I'm sure you'll agree. As an extra perk, our winners tonight can demand to be dropped off first from the vans taking everyone home. <laughs> uh, I think
think we've achieved a lot this evening, not least of which was giving school children a whole new expression to talk about in the playground tomorrow morning. <laughs> And if any of you more seasoned professionals would like to explain it to me after the show, <laughs> then meet me in my dressing room. Before that, though, we have a large room standing by in which we shall further rejoice in this sleazy... No, not yet. In this sleebish... Sleazy. <laughs> in this showy business we call sleaze. The facsimile of sophisticated adult society. In short, we're going to party on, but after last year's debacle, may I urge the gentleman to try and remember those three golden rules of romance. Number one, always check your moustache after eating the pea soup. Number two, make sure the person you're chatting up is finished with her beer before you use it as an ashtray. And number three, nothing, repeat nothing, is as funny the morning after. Isn't that the terrifying truth? Um, it's Christmas time, as you're all aware, and you know, this time of year, even in the business is competitive and heartfelt as ours. I think we all feel a certain, a certain something, and uh, I'd like to take the opportunity here, in front of all of you, to, to wish you all a very merry Yourself a merry little Christmas. Let your heart be light. Next year, all our troubles will be out of sight. Everybody, have yourself a merry little Christmas. Make the Yule time gay. Make it gay. Come next year. last bit wasn't very rude, but the fact that you expected it to be and I disappointed you turned me on. Just one of many HMV presents for Christmas. I was trying to work out who it was until I actually says it was from one plus one. The advert was on and I thought, well, I might as well give it a try. I left a message first. That was relatively easy to do. The next day, I phoned up says, you have messages waiting for you. So I phoned up at night, and I got through to him. He asked me to meet him. We just met each other, and we were married. Call 0891 60 60 60. One plus one gets you together. Pressure from blocked sinuses can cause pain and headaches. Take Sinutab. Its double action eases the pain and relieves congestion quickly. And new Sinutab Nighttime is now available to also aid restful sleep. Sinutab and Sinutab Nighttime relieve sinus pain and headache fast. Yes. If it's raining, it's raining. Get ready to party. It's 100% reggae. The hottest reggae album of the year. So there's going to be a few of you out cheering this time then. 
About 40, I'd reckon. Something for the ladies? Oh, yeah. Two bottles of sweet cherry, mate. Looks like we've overdone it with the sherry. Yeah. Australians wouldn't give a Castle Main 4X for anything else. We're back. The, um, have you noticed how the adverts go very loud? It's annoying, that. But I'm going to speak very loudly so I get louder than the adverts. It is annoying, that, don't you think? What, the adverts are very loud? Yeah, but it wakes yeah, you up, I suppose. Stupid. But, um, uh, the clangers are going to see now. I honestly can't think that I, I can't say as I've really got an opinion of the clangers. Um, I suppose the good thing about them, though, it's not too long. <laughs> and they're better than those live ones where it's a real little hamster. Hmm. <laughs> Of all the planets in the solar system, of all the stars in the Milky Way, perhaps the most troublesome is this one. This cloud-covered planet called Earth. Our planet, the home of the human race. People have stood on the Earth and looked away into the sky, and tried to imagine what life would be like on other planets, other stars. And they have done more than imagine. They have invented things. Complex rockets so powerful that they will blast away from the Earth and carry space probes to invade these distant planets. Robot devices that will land, explore, take photographs, and even dig up pieces of the unfortunate planet and make off with them. Who can say what havoc may be caused? What peaceful lives disrupted? by these unwarranted intrusions. Mm -hmm. 